Welcome to the chapter on pulmonology. In this section, I'll be providing an overview of bronchopulmonary circulation and pulmonary circulation. Let's get started. Bronchopulmonary circulation is supplied by blood from the left ventricle and mostly empties into the left atrium. Pulmonary circulation is supplied by blood from the right ventricle and empties into the left atrium. Let's draw this out so you can see what I mean. Okay, so here I've drawn the heart and the lungs. This is the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, the left ventricle, the aorta, the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary vein, the bronchial artery, as well as the azagous and hemiazagous veins. Let's talk about the pulmonary circulation first. The pulmonary circulation is just the blood supply to the alveoli. So in green, I'll show blood going from the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery to the lungs and to the alveoli, and then ultimately returning to the left atrium through the pulmonary vein. So as you can see, the pulmonary circulation goes from the right ventricle to the left atrium. Okay, now let's talk about the bronchopulmonary circulation, which I'll show in orange. Blood leaving the left ventricle into the aorta is considered part of the systemic circulation because this blood goes to the various organs and eventually returns to the right atrium. However, a small portion of this blood eventually reaches the bronchial artery. This is an important blood supply to the lungs because it helps keep the non-alveolar tissue supplied with oxygen. Most of the blood in the bronchial artery empties into the pulmonary vein, which then returns to the left atrium. So I'll show that here. This may seem odd because the bronchopulmonary circulation essentially bypasses the alveoli. You may be asking yourself, how does the bronchopulmonary circulation get oxygenated then? Well, it doesn't technically get oxygenated. What happens is the deoxygenated bronchopulmonary circulation mixes with the oxygenated blood in the pulmonary vein right here. The oxygen content of the pulmonary vein is much higher than the deoxygenated content of the bronchial arteries. So the two circulations mix and the total oxygen content remains quite high. This means that the mixed blood can travel back to the systemic circulation and still have enough oxygen to adequately oxygenate the tissues, including the bronchopulmonary circulation. It's also important to know that a small portion of blood from the bronchial arteries can actually return to the right atrium by traveling through the azagous and hemiazagous veins, like this. This is why the last slide states that the bronchopulmonary circulation is supplied by blood from the left ventricle and mostly empties into the left atrium. As you can see, some of it goes back to the right atrium. So the bronchopulmonary circulation is supplied by blood from the left ventricle and empties into the left atrium as well as the right atrium. However, keep in mind that most of the blood empties into the left atrium. Okay, with this in mind, let's do a few questions. A researcher is studying pulmonary tissue necrosis in mice. After surgically removing several pulmonary arteries, she notices that the lungs are still adequately oxygenated. Why? Let's quickly redraw the illustration from the last slide. So this is the right atrium and the left atrium. Here we have the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. This is the alveoli, the bronchial artery, and we have the hemiazagous and the azagous veins. Recall that the pulmonary arteries supply blood to the alveoli and are also the primary blood supply to the lung parenchyma. However, the bronchial artery also supplies oxygen to the bronchi and offers collateral circulation to the lung parenchyma. This means even if many of the pulmonary arteries are surgically removed, cross these out, the bronchial blood supply could still maintain adequate oxygenation of the lung tissue and would prevent tissue necrosis. Okay, let's wrap up this section with one more question. How would the resistance of the pulmonary vasculature of a patient at high altitude differ from that of a patient at sea level? So high altitude versus sea level. We'll get into the resistance equation in more detail later in this chapter, but recall from cardiology that resistance equals eight times viscosity times the length divided by pi times the radius to the fourth power. We can see from this equation that the radius of the vessel is the most important factor that alters resistance. If the radius of the vessel decreases, then the resistance increases. For step one, it's important to know that less oxygen reaches the alveoli at high altitudes. 
This ultimately means that less oxygen is in the blood, so patients are hypoxic. Recall that hypoxia causes vasodilation in most tissues, but the lungs are an exception. Hypoxia in the lungs results in vasoconstriction, which is important because it allows shunting of blood to the regions of the lungs that are better oxygenated. So at increased altitude, patients are hypoxic, which results in vasoconstriction, so the radius gets smaller, which increases resistance. So you can see that at high altitudes, patients will experience hypoxia, which will decrease the radius of the pulmonary vasculature and will increase the resistance.